I think the border is a very important issue for uh, Donald Trump. Uh, and the fact that he would communicate to uh, Republican senators and Congress people that he doesn't want us to solve the border problem because he wants to blame uh, Biden for it is, uh, is really appalling. The American people are suffering as a result of uh, what's happening at the border, uh, and someone running for president ought to try and get the, uh, you know, the problem solved as opposed to saying, hey, save that problem. Don't solve it. Uh, let me take credit for solving it later. From my point of view, um, we need relief today, and what we're trying to do will help him if he gets to be president. I will say to President Trump, if we can put this package together the way I hope it falls into place, that you'll have more tools to secure America than you've ever had. And it's not about one president, it's about a system. Senators Mitt Romney and Lindsey Graham, among the handful of Republicans critical of former President Trump for trying to kill a bipartisan immigration bill for his own political gain. What he what he said is, let's be very clear about this. And Democrats need to be very clear about this. Just like they said, like these Republicans said, Donald Trump wants to keep the border open. He wants to keep it open for more fentanyl to flood across and poison and kill Americans. He wants to keep the border open for more illegal immigrants coming in uh, and, and not doing it through an orderly process. Uh, he's getting in the way of what conservatives have called, Republicans have called, the best border security bill in history. Yeah, one they won't be able to get any other day. This is the same guy who also says, along with let's keep the border open, he's saying let's let the economy get wrecked. He, he's rooting, so I can look good. He's rooting against Americans. He yeah. told Lou Dobbs he wants the economy to go into a depression. He wants Joe Biden to be Herbert Hoover, not him. Okay. So that's what we're talking about, a wrecked economy, and open borders. Joining us now, Democratic Congressman Ruben Gallego of Arizona. He's a member of the House Armed Services Committee, a Marine Corps combat veteran, and a candidate for U.S. Senate. And so I guess first, I'd like your reaction to especially the House Republicans who are letting Trump walk all over them for his political game. Well, I mean, you're essentially abdicating your duty. There is a problem at the border. Uh, we need to come together yeah. for a solution that brings more border security. The voters are demanding it. This this surge is unlike anything I've seen here in Arizona, and I've been a member of Congress for 10 years. I voted for $92 billion of border security in the past, and still it is not helping. And the fact that this is being used as a political tool by U.S. Senator, Republican senators, uh, and other politicians. You know, I'm running against Carrie Lake, who claims to be the biggest Trump supporter in the world. Does she agree with Trump that we should not uh, yeah. do this? We should fix the border so it helps him and her politically? I think that's a question that has to be asked about all Republicans. But this is dangerous territory we are in. We need to be treating this as a serious situation, not as a political opportunity. And it's shameful that Republicans are doing that just so they could get Donald Trump, of all people, back into office. Congressman uh, Sharpton here, the, the, the political side of the uh, proposed border uh, control uh, situation that uh, Trump is trying to manipulate. The politics of that is you also have Governor Abbott sending thousands of migrants into mostly Democratic uh, cities uh, that uh, black mayors are in charge. You have the politics of it where this bill uh, or this solution many progressives don't like, but they're willing to do something for the greater good. Talk about that. Because because it's not like they're giving the woke crowd or the progressives anything that uh, those of us considered progressive would want. This is something that uh, is going to take some political maturity on all sides, and they don't even want to give that. Look, it's not ideal, uh, but we, we as Democrats don't control all uh, branches of the government right now. Uh, you know, if we had power within the, the House of Representatives, the Senate, and uh, the White House, I think we'd come up with a quick solution that would actually answer the problems at the at the border. Right now, it's not there. So we do have to be the mature ones in the room, like we always are, and come up with a solution. At the end of the day, the long-term solution that has, that has to come out of this is going to be a combination of border security and immigration reform. 
Uh, but until then, we have to do the best that we can to, number one, keep our uh, asylum system intact, because right now it is being abused. If you go down the border and, and talk to Border Patrol and talk to the nonprofits that, that are working down there, you do see that the asylum system is being abused by people that are just trying to use it to get work permits. Uh, but at the same time, this is not an excuse to totally tear apart the asylum system, because I think morally that's not something that we would want to go to uh, as a country. So, Congressman, let's talk about the other half of this deal, because the idea of border security was to be done in exchange for foreign aid to Israel and namely Ukraine. You've got obviously foreign policy credentials. Tell us about what you see, particularly there in Europe, where it, by the day we're hearing from Kiev, they're simply running out of ammunition and they're deeply worried what will happen if the U.S. doesn't come through and come through soon. They should be worried. And I've visited uh, Ukraine. I've led bipartisan uh, delegations there pre-war and post-war as a chairman of a, the Intel Special Operations Subcommittee. And just personally, as a as a, a Marine and a combat veteran, seeing these young men so dedicated to freedom, to the idea that they wanted to uh, be Ukrainian, uh, and they're willing to sacrifice their lives uh, for it. And for the United States and politicians like Donald Trump and Kerry Lake, who are going to essentially throw away uh, their chance at freedom to really uh, go against, I would say, the nature uh, of the United States of supporting uh, countries that are free, capitalistic, and Western-leaning uh, in, you know, in in for what? I think to, to satisfy, uh, I would say, Donald Trump's lust uh, to make uh, Putin, Putin happy, um, it's embarrassing. Uh, Ronald Reagan would be so embarrassed of, of really what has become the Republican Party, the fact that we are letting uh, we are letting essentially uh, an operation, a, a, a Russian-led operation, misinformation, destroy our standing in the world and letting a democracy who's willing to fight, not asking for one American troop, not asking for one American troop at all, and willing to fight for their uh, sovereignty. And all they're asking for us is for a small portion of our military budget uh, that they have done to Ru what they have done to Russia, we could never imagine have done, and NATO, NATO have done many, many years. So it's 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 a sad statement on what uh, the world is, uh, how the world is looking at us right now. Uh, that is being essentially led by the foreign mm. policy of people like Marsha Taylor Greene, uh, Carrie Lake, uh, and uh, Donald Trump. Democratic Congressman Ruben Gallego of Arizona, thank you very much. He, of course, is a candidate for U.S. Senate. Thanks for being on Thank this Thank you. Uh